Good day and welcome to today's episode of A Rongo Talk. My name is Adolf Gaure and I present to you all the way from a dusty and windy Swakopmund, specifically the Evangelische Lutherische Kirche in Namibia, known as DELK or the Evang Evangelical uh, Lutheran Church of Swakopmund. So in today's episode we have an interview lined up with you with the priest of the Catholic Church who is responsible for the parish of Swakopmund and Valfis Bay known as Father Rufus Nekondo. He speaks about the effects that COVID-19 has had on the church as well as the recent death of a Valfis Bay resident who was buried in Naraval. Today by the way is lollipop day so do make sure that you do get your lollipops and enjoy one or two. I'll also bring you the news, weather and tides, so do stay tuned with us. We'll be back on the flip side. It is now time for the news and in our first story which is COVID-19 related, the Deputy Minister of Health and Social Services, Ushua Mwinyangwe, announced Namibia's third COVID-19 related death yesterday. So Mwinyangwe said that the deceased is a 45-year-old man who passed away on 13 July. She was quoted as saying, we are sadly reporting our third death. The patient passed on at home and his body was brought to the mortuary on the 13th of July by the police. He was known to be on chronic medication and uh, according to information provided by his relatives, uh, he had been well and went to work on 10 July, which was Friday. According to the deputy minister, the patient um, complained of a headache on 12 July and he did not turn up at work the next day after unanswered calls, the police were informed. So a COVID-19 swab was taken on 15 July and the results came back positive on 18 July, Mwinangwe confirmed. So now Namibia has now got 44 positive, um, they reported 44 COVID-19 positive cases yesterday, which now brings the total to 1,209 positive cases. We also had three recoveries and also um, like I reported that third death. So catch that one also on our website on www.erongo.com.na. In another news, uh, in another story, the governor of the Erongo region, Honorable Neville Andre, has warned the public to exercise caution when registering for food donations. So he was speaking at the weekly COVID-19 briefing and said that, uh, and he called on the community to be wary of fraudsters who use the pandemic as a guise to pose as officials of the governor's latest initiative known as the Emergency Operational Center. So you can catch that one as well on our website on www.erongo.com.na. So in our third and final story, we have a story here by, uh, that is about dissatisfied employees of the Beach Hotel Sokobund who complained of harsh labor treatment as they demonstrated earlier last week. So the employee rep representative for these uh, employees, Erastus Haishonga, accused the company, including its shareholders and legal consultants, Sina Legal, of not following the correct procedures when cutting employee salaries and retrenching them. So he was quoted as saying, the company did not want to negotiate with us on our retrenchment package, but forced us to take what they offered. Modern day slavery is entrenched despite our independence. We do not want to be treated like slaves in a democratic country. So um, he also alleges that the company has not paid their employees since the 25% shareholder, Peter Weinhardt, a German national, allegedly forced them to take meat as remuneration instead of salaries. So a petition was slid under the door at the entrance of Beach Hotel since there was no one to take uh, the petition on Beach Hotel's behalf. So the aggrieved uh, workers gave the 75% shareholder, the other 75% shareholder, until the 21st of July 
to engage in formal negotiations. So Peter Weinhardt told Erongo 24-7 that he would only be able to comment today on Monday since he was not on duty when we approached him for a comment. So Erongo will definitely keep you updated on the developments of this story. Do catch this story on www.erongo.com.na. We are a balanced newspaper and we'll definitely get both sides of the story. And meanwhile, um, a photographer from Valfer's Bike, Grissy van Dijk, um, re uh, took some awesome photos of bats that is in the coastal area. So if you do have any photos that you want to send us, make sure that you send them to our WhatsApp number, that is 0811-700-40. I repeat, 0811-700-40. So that was the news. I'll catch you right after this. Bay. It has brought fear among our faithful. It has brought a lot of questions among ourselves. And um, of course, we all know the church depends on the faithful. Um, the funds they use, it comes from the faithful. If they are not congregating, they are not coming together, there won't be any um, income for the church that's a, a well-known factor so it has impacted us in many many different ways and uh, our faithful are uh, calling now and then uh, asking uh, questions asking that we pray for them uh, support them and we are doing our best that we can yes but in terms of financial implications you also have to pay electricity bills, you have to pay water bills. Mm -hmm. How are you coping? How are you managing in these times? Yes, um, we are managing in such a way that um, whenever we get funds, we think of tomorrow, you know. Yes. I mean, that's a uh, nature of a human being. When you get funds, you don't finish up what you have because you don't know what will happen tomorrow. So far, we are managing with what we had before um, COVID-19 came yes. and um, that's what we are managing. We have workers to pay, which we didn't send them home. I mean, they are at home, but we are paying them since March. Yes. They are receiving their salaries, the kindergarten teachers, the office workers, the hostel workers. We have a hostel in Swahomon. They are all at home, but they are receiving their salaries. Uh -huh. We are paying our water bills, our electricity bills. So far, we, we are managing yes, Father. because of our reserves, so to say. Yes. You manage the, the crash. You, the church is uh, running in Naraval. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, schools have not been uh, operating for quite a long time now. Mm -hmm. how, how, how is it impacting the church on that side? Yes, we have um, the kindergarten in Naraville, in uh, Mondesa, and in uh, um, uh, Handys Bay. We also have a hostel which uh, accommodates learners from uh, grade one to grade seven in Swakopmund. Yes. So all those um, places, they are closed. And it's not just about the workers, but also the well-being of the children. Yes. Uh, we are thinking of what is next now. Uh, what about this whole academic year? It's gone. And those places, 
we used to run them with the funds we get from the parents when they pay. Now we are not getting that, but we have to pay the teachers. As I said, we are paying them because we because of what we resent yes. in time. In term, I mean, when crisis comes, we are using what we have, which was there before. Yes, sir. But uh, the impact is very, very much hard that uh, it will be difficult for us to start when things become uh, normal. Yes, Father. If they will be normal. Father, uh, you, you are known as a very outspoken priest. And uh, you observed uh, the, the first uh, funeral on our social media uh, platforms. And you pronounced yourself on that issue. Could, could you briefly uh, elaborate on that? Yes, I, I watch the, the videos uh, circulating on social medias about how the, uh, the funeral of the first, uh, first victim who succumbed to COVID-19 was uh, handled. And, um, and then I saw a video on Friday evening yes uh, people protesting against uh, the second funeral which is supposed to take place and that even on friday i called uh, one priest who is in benduka i said uh, this thing is disturbing and then he said uh, maybe people need to hear your voice so that friday evening I sat in my room there in front of my computer and I decided to let my voice be heard. You know? Yes. And I finished writing that article uh, around um, going to 11 in the night. And then I sent it to that priest I was talking to and he, he edited, he added some um, something. Then he sent it back to me. Then I sent it. Um, to uh, the editor of uh, the Namibi Times. Yes. And around uh, to nine in the morning on Saturday, I started receiving calls that uh, my article is, is circulating. Anyway, um, I just wanted to make my voice heard, not as a priest, but as is a concerned citizen of uh, the Republic of Namibia, I'm not against where people are being buried. My voice is that I'm against or I'm not happy on how the funeral are being held. You know? Yes. A person being buried in the night, it doesn't make sense to me. Why do you have to carry out the funeral in the night? Why don't you allow few members, uh, family members to attend? If they will get corona, what about those who are uh, burying that person? And I went there on Saturday when people gathered there. The whole way uh, the person is supposed to be buried is water. I mean, we are human beings. And I said in that article that um, it, it can bring stigmatization, it can bring discrimination. And we have many people who are in quarantine. They have access to their phones. They are seeing all these things. And the question in their mind is that if I die, so I'll be buried like this. That can bring fear into us in such a way that we will not want to come forth and get tested, you know. Exactly. Because I don't want to be buried the way uh, people are being buried. Yes. And uh, a question I wanted to ask in that article, but I said, let me not ask it, but I will say it now. God forbid, but let's say one of the minister. One of uh, uh, those higher uh, position ranks dies. Will he or she be buried the same way we are burying uh, those people? Yes. It's not fair. Yes, Father. A human being, whether dead or alive, it's a human being. You can't bury somebody like you are burying a dog. Yes. It doesn't make sense. And that's my view. 
I say that that's my view. I wrote that article as me, Rufus, not as a Catholic church. Yes. I just made my views be heard, you know, because it would be useless for us to complain and complain and complain, but we are not doing anything. We have to do something, all of us. Mm -hmm. And I made my voice be heard regarding the way the funerals are being uh, uh, conducted. conducted. Yes, Father. Yeah. And then finally, Father, the church has availed its uh, pastoral facility in Naraval as a, a, a place where people are quarantined. What What is your feeling about that? Yes, we... It was not easy to avail that uh, that center. We have uh, around uh, 45 rooms there. And um, it was not easy. We uh, Many people were against it. But then we ended up saying that we will be selfish as a church if we don't avail our facility for, for quarantine. By the way, that's a mission of the church, to help the people. Yes. By the way, that building is not for me, it's for the people. Yes, you know? yes. By the way, even the funds we have is not, the money is not for me, it's for the people. It will be selfish of us having a building there. Meanwhile, people are looking for places for quarantine. So, we said we are going to avail our center. The Ministry of Health, they came, they assessed the, the building. Yes. They saw that it's fit for quarantining the people. But now uh, messages are going around, no, we brought Corona in Narave and so forth. I want to make this thing clear. We are not quarantining people who are positive. Mm -hmm. We are quarantining people who are waiting for their results. Yes. And we are quarantining people from mainly the, the fishing companies. Okay. Before the seafarers goes to the sea, they stay in our facility, they get tested, and once they are tested, they wait for their results. Yes. Once their results are out, then they go to the sea. If there is one who is positive, yes. immediately the Minister of Health come and take that person away from our quarantine places. Yes. Now, there were rumors that no, uh, they, they are moving around and what, what. Yes. Once they come there, they are in their rooms. We have three workers there, one gentleman and two ladies. They, the, moon, um, the, the, the fishing companies provided them with uh, protective gears. They are provided with uh, vitamin C. They are being checked. Everything is in order. Yes. Now, if one guy needs something special from the shop. Yes. They always send that one gentleman who is there. They write what they need and he goes to the shop, buys whatever they need uh, for them, he brings them. Yes. He's not even in contact with them. He, he knocks at the door. Even when they bring the food, the food, the way it's refused, the, the fishing companies bring their own food. They give to um, their workers. They knock at the door, they put the food at the door, and the person takes the food, and then the person goes and eat. Yes. And then afterward, they uh, bring the trash out, which are also being kept in those uh, red plastic to show that they are, they, 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 they are dangerous. And yes. then we contracted the company which comes to collect those, take them to the municipal um, dumping site and ban them. Yes. So every day there are those who are assessing the place coming there to make sure that everything is in place. People complain, you know, um, I understand. We are different, I understand the, their complaints. But the thing is, we need to ask ourselves, what if I get <laughs> this virus? Mm -hmm. Should people not avail accommodation for me? You know, yes. because eventually this virus, by the way I see it, it will get all of us. You know, 
And if he doesn't get me one of my relatives or one of my friends, my mother, my dad, my uncle, or whatsoever. But the question you need to ask yourself is, what if the person close to me, what if it gets me? Yes. How should I be treated? Yes. Should the church not avail a facility to be quarant for me to be quarantined? We have to. And that's the mission of the church, to help the people. And that's what we are doing. And the Ministry of uh, Health, they come almost every day to check that everything is proper. It is now time for the tides and the weather. Starting off with the tides, uh, we had a high tide at about 3 a.m. this morning and a low tide as well at about 10 minutes past 9 this morning. We will also have another high tide at about 25 minutes to 4 this afternoon with our last low tide for the day coming at about half past 9 in the evening. And now for the weather, starting off with Valfus Bay. So we had a sunrise for Valfus Bay as well as Swakopmund at about 20 minutes to 8 this morning and the sunset for these two coastal towns will be about at uh, 25 minutes to 7 uh, this uh, afternoon with the wind direction for both Swakopmund and Valfus Bay being a northerly wind flow. So for, uh, for Valfus Bay today had a maximum temperature of 27 degrees tomorrow Tuesday will have a 17 degrees minimum and a uh, maximum of 26 degrees Celsius. Sokobmund will have a 26 degrees Celsius maximum today and tomorrow will experience a very cool minimum of 16 degrees and a moderate uh, 24 degrees maximum for Tuesday. Hentis Bay had a sunrise, uh, had their sun sunrise at also at um, 20 minutes to 8 this morning and their sunset will be slightly later at 22 seven this afternoon. Their wind direction is uh, flowing from the northwesterly direction and they had a maximum temperature of 27 degrees Celsius today. Tomorrow they will experience a minimum of 16 degrees and a maximum of 26 degrees Celsius. Moving on further eastwards to Arandas, they had a sunrise at uh, about 22 minutes to 8 in this morning and their sunset will also be around about 25 minutes to 7 this afternoon and their wind direction was a north and or will be a northeasterly wind flow. Today their maximum temperature was a very warm 32 degrees Celsius so east weather prevailing that side and tomorrow they will have a minimum temperature of 17 degrees and uh, their maximum will remain at 32 degrees Celsius. Further eastwards and inland we go to Usakos and uh, they had a similar sun, sunrise and sunset to Karibeb and Omaruru, as well as a similar wind flow. So their sunrise for these three towns is uh, 25 minutes to 8 o'clock this morning. That's when the sun rose there. And the sun will set at half past 6 this afternoon. And uh, their wind direction will also be very uh, similar or actually exactly the same as Arandas. It will be a northeasterly wind flow that side. So for Usakos today, on Monday, they had a maximum of 29 degrees Celsius. Tomorrow, Tuesday, they will have a minimum of 10 degrees with a maximum of 29 degrees Celsius. Karibeb had, um, oh, is experiencing a 26 degrees maximum today. And tomorrow, a slightly cooler minimum of 8 degrees with a maximum of 26 degrees Celsius. Maruru today had 27 degrees Celsius forecasted with tomorrow they have uh, forecasted a temperature of 6 degrees as a minimum. Very cool indeed. And their maximum will be 27 degrees Celsius. So that was the tides and the weather. Do catch us right after this. And that, unfortunately, is the end of today's episode of A Rongo Talk. It was a pleasure having you in my company. So, but do not forget, we do have a WhatsApp number that you can send your news tips as well as those photos. Send us photos on 0811-700-40. Do also send us your news tips and your videos to that number as well. We have 
also got a, a website on www.erongo.com.na where you can find all our latest news. Everything that is trending is on that website. Social media, we are also there. We like things. So Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram is one click away, and you can catch all our stories and much more as well. And Facebook, now our Facebook page has over 50,000 followers. So if you want to make use of that 50,000 followers as a corporate or as a company, yo, you don't want to miss that one. Do make sure that you also um, get in touch with our people to make sure that you are on, a, on that platform. Or even if you want an L shape, we can sort you out. So in, regarding COVID-19, please let us use common sense. Let us wear our face masks, sanitize, wash our hands regularly with warm water, and do keep that social distancing. So. It has been a pleasure having you in my company. My name is Adolf Kaure. We'll catch you again tomorrow. Cheers.